everyone, welcome to today's episode of Candid Kaya. Are you interested in one day becoming a pharmacist? Well, stay tuned. I am here with Dr. Cynthia, and she is going to tell you how you can do just that. Well, hello, Dr. Cynthia. Hello. Can you tell the viewers just a little bit about yourself? Sure. Well, my name is Dr. Cynthia Efe. I was born in Nigeria, raised in Westchester, New York, and I've been in Atlanta for about 10 years now. I went to Spelman, where I received my BA in psychology, and then went on to pharmacy school here in Atlanta, Georgia, Mercy University College of Pharmacy. All right. And you just graduated. I just graduated. Congratulations. Yes, I did. Yes, that's it's awesome. Amazing. It's a good um, accomplishment. Definitely fulfilled. Um, my dreams of becoming a pharmacist and going on to do better things here within the field. Yeah. Awesome. Tell us a little bit about what inspired you to become a pharmacist. Yeah, it was actually a long journey. I, have, I come from a family with a lot of physicians and nurses, so I was always exposed to healthcare and medicine. But I wanted to take more of a unique route as opposed to um, when it comes to patient care. So I thought pharmacy and getting my doctor in pharmacy was the best route for me, given my personality and having a major reach and really wanted to um, having patients see me in a different light as opposed to becoming an MD or a nurse. A lot of people have different physicians for different conditions that they have, but they typically only have one pharmacist. So I, when talking to my pharmacist and talking to different um, people in the community, I thought pharmacy was the best route for me after taking a year off and really discovering who I who I was within the um, within Atlanta. So. All right. Awesome. Okay. So just tell me an overview of what is the day in the life like of a pharmacist. The day in the life, depending on what type of pharmacist you are, is definitely patient focus. So if you're working in the hospital setting, you're rounding with the different um, physicians, you're rounding with nurses and different people within the healthcare team. But if you're in the, in, if you're in the community setting, you're dealing with a lot of patients in a more intimate level because you're seeing them once a month or once every few weeks where they're talking to you about their condition or their medications. And that's what we focus on is to make sure our patients know about their medications. They're taking it correctly. We have this thing called compliance because yes, the patient has the drug, but if they're not taking it correctly, then there's no point of them having it. Right. Yeah. All right, Cynthia. So what characteristics do you think make a good pharmacist? Um, I would say the top two characteristics that make a good pharmacist will someone who's patient. And one of the key ones is someone who's intuitive because pharmacists, Pharmacy is a forever changing field, guidelines are changing, new drugs are always coming into market. So if you're not intuitive enough to ask some questions, really dig in to find out what's the best medication for your patients, what's what's on board, what's in the time, what's in the uh, uh, pipeline for new medications and new conditions, then you, you will really be the best pharmacist that you can be. So I would say being patient with your patients, also being intuitive are the top two characteristics that make a, a great pharmacist. All right. Okay, so typical pharmacists have about six to eight years of schooling, right? Pretty much, yes. So tell us a little bit more about what type of educational background you need to have. Well, I think a lot of the programs are now moving into where um, students who are applying need actual bachelors. Um, but uh, what I realized is that you, as long as you come from a strong science background, you take all the prerequisites needed for your program, it will allow you to be a strong candidate to apply in pharmacy school. So strong, when I say strong science background, of course, your biochems, your chemistries, organic chemistries, your um, AP, not your AP, but your anatomy and physiology, biology, things like that, some physics, and also microeconomics, which I found that surprising when it came <laughs> to um, applying to pharmacy school. So definitely a, a a lot of different classes you need, but if you want to go to a specific program, look into that program, see what are the prerequisites you need. I think public speaking is another one of those. So they really want a well-rounded student before applying so that they can really see how they are going to be as a student, depending on how rigorous the program is. All right. Yeah. Okay, so tell us a little bit about when you decided that PharmD mm -hmm. was going to be you uh -huh. and um, kind of the process of that in-between stage mm -hmm. and application stage. Yeah, um, so after I graduated from Spelman in 2012, I continued to do research at the school and I also started to volunteer at different hospitals in Atlanta. So I volunteered at Atlanta Medical Center in Emory just to see what pharmacists did. And by volunteering at two different um, institutions, I got two different perspectives about what pharmacists did. I volunteered with the director in one and the others I just volunteered with um, oncology pharmacists 
And that really allowed me to get an overview as to what characteristics that I needed to apply and also to what programs I should apply to. Luckily, Mercer University has a very strong pull here in Atlanta, Georgia, because uh, students who graduate from there also be working in the pharmacies, working in the hospitals here in Atlanta, Georgia. So that's what influenced me to apply, and they gave me a good overview as to what opportunities I could get there as well. And when it comes to applying, you definitely I need a strong um, personal statement. Luckily, I had a good story to tell. And I fished out. I let everybody read my personal statement, give me good tips as to what I should add, you know, be more, what details, what gaps I was missing in order to make my application as strong as possible. All right. So sort of what you did in the interim was you volunteered to make sure that's an area of interest to exactly. you. Exactly. Okay. Because once you enter any of these programs, whether that's an MBA, you want to become a medical doctor, you want to go to dentistry, you want to make sure that's the right program for you. Because once you start, you want to finish. Right. <laughs> that's it. You, de you don't want to waste your money or waste your time. So I wanted to put my, you know, get a little, get my feet wet as to what I was entering. Though clinical pharmacy wasn't what I actually did what I'm going to do after, with my degree, I'm so happy I got that um, glimpse as to what pharmacists did in that setting. All right. yeah. So tell us, how did you choose what area or what field you were going to pursue? Okay, so with my experience, I was able to take an elective, a pharmaceutical industry elective, where they really gave us a good overview as to what pharmacists, um, the roles different pharmacists can play within the pharmaceutical industry, so at a pharmaceutical company. And there, I was introduced to regulatory affairs and okay. what pharmacists do within regulatory affairs. Then I went on to apply to the FDA rotation where I was able to spend five weeks at the FDA and really go, go into the drug approval process, these intense meetings where pharmacists are involved and sit with pharmaceutical companies to get their drugs approved and what the right things they're doing with their research and clinical trials. That I went from there to really solidify my interest in regulatory affairs, which it, and that led me to apply to fellowships and luckily land one in Boston. All right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I hear you. Don't it was a lot of here. steps. It was a lot of steps, but once you actually figure out what you want to do, it's an exciting process. Very right. exciting process. Yeah. All right. So, do is it a requirement as most medical professionals to have a license? Mm, that's a, actually a great question. It's not required when you're going into the industry, but it is required if you want to work in the community setting, so like a Walgreens or a CVS, or if you want to be a, become a clinical pharmacist and work in the hospital, mm -hmm. you would need to sit down and take your boards, ours are called the NAPLEX, and become a registered pharmacist. So your name would be Dr. Dr. Stevens PharmD slash RPH. Mm -hmm. Right now, I'm just Cynthia, Dr. Cynthia Ayakebe, PharmD. I don't have an RPH because I won't need it for my program. But I do plan to sit and take my boards eventually because I think it will be a, a good thing to have in the later years. How long do you have to take the boards? Uh, there is no restricted time, but the longer you are out of school, you'll start to forget the, the, <laughs> right. the things you've learned. So the quicker, the better. Right. So I plan to sit and take mine in August, but mm -hmm. I, don't need a, I don't need to be a registered pharmacist or have my boards in to order to practice it. Yeah. Right. Okay, that so, makes sense. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about how does one become a pharmacist? What was your job search like? Mm. My job search was a lot of Google searches. Uh, what can an individual do with a PharmD? And it gave me a vast breakdown. You could become a consultant. You, you become a clinical pharmacist. And then within clinical pharmacy, you can dig deeper into that. Do you want to be a cardiology specialist? Do you want to be an oncology specialist? So there are so many things one can do with a PharmD. And I think now we're really starting to break down the opportunities pharmacists can have outside of just the community setting, which is what pharmacists are known for. They're used to us being behind the counter and telling you details about your medications. Right. Well, now we could do way more than that, um, luckily, as we keep pushing forward and getting more opportunities to really show what pharmacists can do. <laughs> All right, so let's just do a quick overview of what you need to do to become a pharmacist. So step one, you need educational background, yes. you need a bachelor's degree, and you need to apply to a program. Exactly. Step two, you need to graduate from the program. <laughs> right. Step three, you can either apply for a job like Cynthia did, or you can go ahead and do the NAPLEX mm -hmm. licensing mm -hmm. um, to get an do, RPA. Exactly. Or there's also, you could do a residency, okay. which is very popular as well. You could do a one-year residency, get a basic clinical, become very strong as a clinical pharmacist. And some people go and do another PGY2 or second-year residency where they specialize in cardiology or oncology, like I mentioned earlier. Yeah. Okay. 
All right, Cynthia, now I want to get just a little bit more of your advice. What is your advice for students who are trying to select the correct Farm B program for them? Okay. Well, I'll, my best advice is to really study the program, dig into their retention rate, because that's huge. But unique opportunities you could get that you possibly can't get at other programs, so that's unique rotations or unique um, unique electives like the ones that I was able to take. And I was, those are the two big um, tips that I would give and talk to past graduates of the program because they're going to keep it 100% as well, especially if they're active in their alumni association or not active in their alumni association. So I would say that's the two biggest tips I would give. All right. Yeah. So what advice do you have for current Farm B students? My advice to you all is to push it out. It's a tough it's, it's a tough and long road, but it's definitely going to pay off at the end, especially if you push yourself to your limit and really um, study as hard as you can, explore different opportunities within your program and different opportunities within pharmacy, and definitely network. And people say network often, but develop those relationships that will help you later on within your career because it's pharmacy, I know you've definitely heard this, pharmacy is a very small world, and every connection you make is going to be beneficial for you regardless of what you enter, what field you enter. All right. And my next question is, what advice do you have for those who are trying to decide if pharmacy is the right path for mm -hmm. them? I would say first figure out if medicine and healthcare is your interest because within medicine, there are different careers you could go about within medicine itself. But if you know pharmacy is right for you, um, talk to current pharmacists. Like I said, community pharmacists are willing to talk to you anytime you want them. Volunteer at hospitals if you think clinical pharmacy is the right route for you. Search on LinkedIn. Link, I used to literally stalk people on LinkedIn <laughs> at one point. Um, <laughs> but yeah, do that. If you're not too sure as to what you want to do within pharmacy or if medicine is for you and not for you, just keep digging. There's Don't rush into something you're not too sure about. All right. Yeah. So my last question is I finished my sentence. <laughs> okay. And it just is... As a pharmacist, I hope to serve a diverse patient population. Boom! <laughs> well, there you have it. I hope you all enjoyed this exclusive interview with the new Dr. Cynthia Ayaka Bay. <laughs> if you guys have any questions or com comments about PharmD programs or pharmacy school, just leave them below and we'll make sure that they get answered. Definitely. Thank you all for tuning in Thank and good luck on your journey. We'll see you next time. Ha <laughs> ha.